TJ from SmokescreenDesign.com. I wanted to share with you a observational experiment I did, and this is at the Hillsdale Reservoir, also called the Hillsdale Lake. And from this side, there's a, a road here. Uh, I did an observation from uh, two spots, one higher, one lower. Looked straight across, and then at this point here. I uh, did an observation from there and I looked back uh, from this point to this point is five and 5.37 miles almost five and a half so that's what I did when I looked across this way but when looking back from this uh, dam this road over to this part it's about five miles to this land here and it would say the inlet's about five and a half. So going from this side to this other one is about five, five and a half miles. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I just wanted to go and take a look and see what I could see. And I thought I should take a camera, maybe something better than my cell phone. But then I was like, no, I just want to go look. Now because of the altitude that I'd be at, I knew that there wasn't going to be anything that was going to be hidden. I should be able to see all the way across. So going off of the app that I was using on my phone, I came up with this, that this point here was 20 feet above this point here. So here's the road over on this right. Then this is really loose dirt and some rocks. And then this is a little dirt road. And then I checked on Google, and Google gives about the same exact, <clears throat> let's say about the same exact, about the same measurements as my phone did. So I'm assuming they just use the same data. And then I checked this water line to see what Google says about the difference between there and this point. And it says it was about 10 feet. Now for five to five and a half miles there's a 17 to 20 foot drop and so if this point here is 10 feet above the water and then this is 20 feet above this point so I came up with the uh, halfway between this line which would be 10 feet so halfway between this line would be 10 and then halfway between this dirt road and this red line that would be uh, five so five to ten feet would be fifteen to twenty because we take the water line which is to here is ten and then that would be a five so that'd be fifteen and then this would be twenty so we're looking at a seventeen to twenty foot drop in curve and that's roughly not really being able to pinpoint it would be roughly in this area somewhere. Now for the hump in the middle of the curve that's a different calculation you actually would take instead of doing five, five and a half you would do um, half of that and that would give you the hump measurement. So we're looking at a four foot hump So for the hump, we are looking at uh, four to five feet, and I just had to pause real quick because I just did a measurement for four or five miles, and I didn't do one for 5.37 miles. So four to five foot hump is what we should see in the curve, and that would be this red line here, just showing uh, that. Now I'm not expecting to see a drop in curve as already um, mentioned just because as you go higher you can see further. Now when I did this experiment it was um, it was it was very good. I was um, glad to get out and and to actually do an experiment because I've just watched videos, I've seen pictures, uh, so many things and one of the issues that I came across was when I was trying to find places to do experiments, I'm looking at this map, 
I'm seeing land that comes across and thinking it's going to block my view. I'm not going to be able to see across it. And it just, you know, deterred me from going out and looking. And one of the problems is that when looking at altitudes like this, like these distances are just so huge, but looking at maps, they look so small. And what I mean by that, well, I didn't realize this, so when going on this dam, this bridge, whatever, can't park on it, not enough uh, space for that, but even to the side when there's actually grass, they, let, they don't let you park there. So I parked over here, and I ended up walking two miles. So I walked two miles to get to this point and back, and <laughs> I was <clears throat> not expecting that good exercise, but I was not ready for for that. <clears throat> and also, like this land here, it's really not that high. So I just get 20 feet up, and I could clearly see over it. And I'm going to show you just a few pictures. And I... I've noticed that a lot of people who are at the forefront of the Flat Earth Revival have done zero experiments. None. Absolutely none. People got their game point views that they come from, from a game designer's view, and they've done zero experiments, and they have some of the best of the locations to do amazing experiments, and they've done none. Zero. I mean, that should tell you something right there. I uh, got uh, just people all over the place writing books about the flat earth. As far as I know, I've, I've seen zero experiments. Zero. So there's only a few people who have uh, done experiments that are at the forefront. There's a lot of people that aren't really well known, and they're out there doing the experiments with the videos and, and doing a lot of really great things. When I got out there to see with my own eyes what I saw, it's completely different in cameras, pictures, videos. just cannot capture you know, what you see. I saw completely all the way across as I expected. There wasn't going to be any curve that was going to hide it. So I started here. Well, of course, I drove up here. I could see all the way across. But then I started here, so I was 10 feet above the water. And then there's this object here, which we're going to come back to, because when I go to the other side. And then we have the road that leads to this object that goes up to, to the main road. And you can see that this goes down to the water level, so that'll be important when we come back to that point. So I looked across. Now... I don't know what I was seeing, but I kept looking at Google Maps on my phone, just looking at the terrain, because this land just kind of goes around and winds, and then this land just kind of comes out a little bit and winds around, but I was seeing the other side. I was seeing the where the land met the water all the way across, and it's not just that I could see it, but it was flat all the way, all five miles, five and a half miles, however the farthest away I was seeing was flat all the way across, completely flat. And there was no doubt in my mind at all that it was flat. And it appeared, and I'm using the word appearance because without taking accurate measurements, couldn't tell, but it appeared to be level all the way. And that's not something that could be you know, easily proven with the naked eye. But it was flat all the way across. And it was just, just eye-opening. So then I went up on the other side of that railing. So I wasn't on the road, but I went up to that highest point that I showed. So here I am, 30 feet above the water, which really looks much higher than 30 feet. We have ice and water, but see all the way across, and it was just flat all the way.
So we see the land over here. We see the light, light part of the land. We see some dark stuff over here, which is possibly the light stuff here, dark stuff over here. Then I zoomed in on this one. The scene all the way across. You can see where the water meets the land, and it was just flat all the way. Completely flat. And I understand that this distance is pretty small. But uh, one of the other issues that we get to is when we see further distances is having the ability to be up high enough to get beyond the point of the horizon and where perspective comes in where we have the vanishing point where we can't see far enough. So now I was on the other side and this is the a higher the higher point before I get down to the water level and I'm about 40 feet maybe 50 feet above the water and it was just so flat all the way across and there's that object and with this object we can clearly see water see the road we can see where the back part of this road goes up to the road see the base of it we can see where the water and the land meet and then we can see that the uh, hill that goes up we can see it all and it was flat all the way out flat all the way so this one I was further down much closer to the water line you can see the land you can see behind it then I zoomed in so from here it's hard to see that object which it was shining in the sun so it was lit up a little bit so I could definitely see where it was at but when I zoomed in I had some of this land here that hid it from view but we can make out the road can make out the uh, street and we see just hidden by land but it's still in uh, full view like I said not supposed to be hidden by curve because I was high enough but it was, it was flat all the way out I mean it could have been said that oh it's hidden by curve can't see it but zoom in and it's visible and that happens a lot that we've seen where people are doing experiments and they say objects are hidden by curve and then they zoom in with the camera and they say nope it's still there not hidden by curve so I want to do another experiment and it's a lake that's about 15 well the lake is much further than 15 miles but it has a another road dam and 15 miles out from that point it's the lake is pretty straight it's got to be um, a man-made one so it's pretty straight out and there's a bridge that's 15 miles away I asked my friend about it because he lives out by there it's a couple hours away if he could see the bridge from that road on the dam he says no he, he can't see it so working with these larger distances as many people have said that perspective comes in and it's hard to see 
beyond the perspective unless you can get up higher. So I'm trying to figure out how to to accomplish that to be able to get high enough to to see. I mean, at, at 15 miles, you know, that's a pretty good distance, and it's a good one to uh, really be able to determine if there is curve, since there would be a much greater amount of curve instead of the hump, which would only be four to five feet in this case. I don't have the money for a drone, so if I could get a drone and go up, then that would definitely be something. I uh, would need a camera to make sure to be able to see that far as well. Uh, to be able to, it would be great to be able to zoom in and zoom out and all that. So maybe in the summer, uh, be able to figure something out by then to be able to do that experiment. So that would be a pretty big one. But as of right now, I don't want to drive two hours out there just to take a look and just be able to see that no can't see out that far because of perspective or as some people would say curve, which I would like to investigate to see um, the reality of that. So that's um, all that I have. Not saying that this is absolute proof that the earth was flat. For me, I looked out there. It was flat as can be. And it's uh, that was pretty solid evidence with my own eyes, what I've got to see at five and a half, almost five and a half miles away. So that was um, an exciting event. So that's why I want to encourage people to do. Everyone is so, I don't want to say everyone, but a lot of people are so wrapped up in having to prove uh, what the sun is supposed to do and what it's supposed to look like and what the moon is supposed to do and look like and the stars and what they do and what they don't do and how this and how that works and the only thing that matters really and it's great that people are looking into that and trying to figure it out that's great and I think we should do that but that doesn't prove whether the earth is flat or round what proves whether the earth is flat or round is is there any curve that's it if there's no curve then all that other stuff about can't work on a flat plane can only work on the globe doesn't matter because if there's no curve then the globe is gone so then everyone has to figure out okay it's flat then how does this work on a flat plane? So that's the um, that's what I'm working towards, just looking for the curve, which many of us are not seeing. Just not seeing it. So then when there's solid evidence for that, which there's a lot of, lot of evidence, and I think there's a lot of solid evidence for this, then maybe people will start looking at how things do work or can work on the flat plane. So if you've got any ideas for me about that 15 mile, and the lake goes much further than that. I mean, it could be 20 miles, 25 miles. So if you have any ideas on how I can accomplish that, or maybe someone has a uh, drone that you just want to send me to use and I'll use it and I'll send it back something like that um, so if you got any ideas for me let me know because I would really like to do that and I um, don't have any time frame on that until I can figure it out then some point in this uh, this summer I will um, try to get that done alright thanks